Okay, it's the WPIAL Blitz Show, Week One Playoff Edition. My name is Bruce Badgley, Ian McMeans. We've got a jam-packed hour plus. Who knows? I mean, maybe it'll take us through till next morning. I mean, uh, we're gonna get through it here. But Ian, uh, it's the best time of the year, isn't it? It absolutely is. The playoff brackets are set. We had a lot of really thrilling games that came down to the wire last week to determine the last couple of playoff spots. And here we go. I mean, now's <laughs> when it matters, right? You've got, you know, the usual suspects pretty much all made the playoffs this year. Um, got a couple new faces as well, or teams that haven't been there super often. And, you know, now's, now's when teams make their legacy, right? That the regular season is what gets you there, but the playoffs are really when you make your legacy and that's what people remember you for. I tell you what, the one thing that has been very enjoyable for me, and now this is like our third year, you know, doing this is, you know, seeing the progression of the teams and, you know, I'll be honest with you. This is the year that I'm most looking forward to because this is the one that is like we don't have any distractions we don't have the covid we have like a normal year we've had an entire off season we've had a great regular season and now we're going to get into a normal postseason take it away my friend yeah and and on that note too um you know obviously we started the show in 2020 which was the covid year and there was a bunch of cancellations and it was really messy you never really knew what was going to happen even like the day before games were scheduled to happen and then when the playoffs came around that year it was kind of like well you know we there there <laughs> we were, were teams have the a same game. <laughs> conference that didn't play each other we weren't really sure what all was you know how everyone was going to get seated or how they even stacked up because they only played conference games and then last year they played more of the non-conference schedule but we had a lot of cancellations that still happened you know week in and week out this year there was only one game canceled the whole year um and that was because avella um who had a very small roster to begin with had a bunch of kids get injured and we're down to i think 11 or 12 healthy players and wow. um so you know that was just a and that happens i does. mean that that happens in the yep. lower classification yep yeah exactly but they they only had to miss one game they bounced back the following week we're able to get some kids back healthy and we're able to keep playing so you know props to props to them and um you know but to go a whole season with only one game canceled is great i mean even thinking back to you know 2019 the, the year before COVID happened i know we didn't do the show that year but that was one of the years that kind of garnered a lot of complaints about the Whippeal scheduling system, because there was a lot of games canceled that year because of how they scheduled non-conference games where you had completely overmatched teams just being like, we're not going to play this. Yeah, game. We're exactly. Gonna, right. We're just forfeit. It's a non-conference game. So um, it was great. You know, a, a full complete season happened this year. Um, a lot of really good storylines. And now these are all kind of coming together, you know, as we, as we get into the playoffs as well. So thank you everyone for joining us. We've got a ton of content to get through tonight. If you're watching, and I got show, a, and I got a ton of questions for you as we go through this. So <laughs> If you're watching the show, you obviously know where to find us um, on YouTube. And also you can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as all of our articles on SteelCityBlitz.com. And hey, bef before we yes. get too far, let's thank all the viewers for last week. I think we had oh, yeah. record viewership last week. Now, I think it, you know, we want to thank both coaches for Aliquippa and Central Valley for being on the show, but we want to thank all of the fans last week for that. Watch the show. And hopefully you're watching the show again this week. We really appreciate it. You know, this has been a labor of love for both of us here for the last three years. So thank you so very much. I just wanted to get that out of the way early. Yeah, absolutely. We, we really appreciate, it. you know, we try to be, entertaining informative and honest all at the same time which can be a hard a hard you know three things to kind of triangulate um but that's that's always our goal for the show um is to be informative honest but also entertaining um so yes thank you everyone for joining us we, we really appreciate all the support on twitter facebook everyone you know sharing links to the show and all that um and, and also the coaches who all joined us this year um you know we'll try oh. to give some of them shout outs you know last week obviously we had record numbers with both coach warfield and coach Lyons joining us and man did their teams put on a good game oh I mean, my that was god a fantastic game you know when, when that all transpired not to digress but when you know, that all transpired that it ended up being a great game. And then also with, uh, you know, seeing the success of some of the coaches that we had on this year. Yeah. It's just, it, it, it's so great. Thanks everybody 
for watching and being part of the show. Yes. Yes. All right. So let's talk about some of those key results. Obviously, Aliquippa getting that win over Central Valley to win the conference title. Um, Mars beat North Catholic in a game uh, that decided the last playoff spot in 4A. Um, so Mars wound up getting that last playoff spot and Hampton also got in. Um, it came down to the margin of victory tiebreaker points. Um, <laughs> and it, so at the end of the day, Hampton, Mars and North Catholic were tied in the standings. They split head to head with each other. Um, so all the Gardner points were equal. The, the margin of victory wound up being Hampton plus one, Mars zero, North wow. Catholic minus one. Um, Incredible. So Hampton won the three-way tie, and then it reverts back to head-to-head between Mars and North Catholic, which Mars won the head-to-head game, which got Mars into the playoffs. The crazy thing is that if one of two things had happened, North Catholic, when they played Hampton, won by six in overtime. They missed the extra point um, and then stopped Hampton on defense. If North had made that extra point against Hampton in overtime, they would have made the playoffs. Also, if North had let... Were you the only guy that had that? I mean, that stat that that extra point is what cost them being in the playoffs. Yeah, probably. (laughs) Um, But but also the the second thing, though, is if North had let Mars score any more points, they also would have been in the playoffs because Mars was at zero in the tiebreaker points and you can get up to plus 10. So Mars could have got up to like plus three if they had kicked another field goal. Um, so if North had let Mars score a touchdown field goal, whatever Mars would have been plus three would have won the three-way tiebreaker. And then it would have been between North and Hampton head to head, which North had won. So if North had either made the extra point in overtime or let Mars score again in this wow. game, they would have made the playoffs, but That's as crazy. it happens, they did not, um, two great games, actually three great games this week. Um, Penn Trafford and Franklin Regional. Penn Trafford defending 5A state champs needed to win to get into the playoffs. Uh, They were down 21-14 in the fourth quarter, came back, scored a touchdown, and then scored in overtime and held on defense to beat Franklin Regional, um, who was the conference champion too. So that was a big win for Penn Trafford. Um, Seneca Valley, looked like they were cruising to to get into the playoffs. They were up 26 to 14 on North Allegheny in the fourth quarter. Mount Lebanon crushed Cannon McMillan. So that was a win and get in game. So Mount Lebanon got in by winning that game. Then it all Seneca Valley needed to do is hang on and beat North Allegheny to get into the playoffs. Um, but because and Seneca, North Allegheny was already in too, yeah, right? And I mean they didn't in. have to come yep. back to win this game Correct. to get in. Yep. Yep. But they, they came back, uh, from, from 12 points down in the fourth quarter to beat Seneca Valley, knocked Seneca out of the playoffs and Cannon Mack, which got beat 31, nothing, then got into the playoffs because they had had a head to head victory over Seneca Valley earlier in the season. I can't, it's just, you know, I can't tell you, you know, like I just talked about North Allegheny, their ticket was punched to the postseason a while ago yeah right exactly and so they're down in the fourth quarter and it's like they could have just mailed it in Mm -hmm. how incredible is that effort by that north allegheny team to come back it wasn't probably good it may or may may not have affected their seating it would how incredible uh uh, an effort Mm -hmm. you know uh and fortitude and everything and to to look within and come back and win that game. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Yep. And then on the the flip side, Olsh was beating Cornell um, in the fourth quarter. And because Fort Cherry beat Burgettstown fairly handily, this turned into a winning, get in, losing your out game. And Cornell scored a touchdown with about two minutes left. And Olsh had to stop a two point conversion attempt to hold on for the victory uh, and get into the playoffs. So Cornell, if they had made that two point conversion would have been in the playoffs and Olsh would have been out. Um, So, you know, every little bit matters. It all comes to the game of inches, as we always say. Um, The upset of the week, Thomas Jefferson beating McKeesport, um, a fantastic defensive effort uh, by Jordan Mayer and the Thomas Jefferson defense to hold that McKeesport running game in check. Um, And a a great result there that threw that conference into a three-way tie. And we'll talk a bit more about that later. Uh, some other noteworthy results from last week, Woodland Hills beating Penn Hills. 
um, in somewhat controversial fashion um, because there was a, a pass to the end zone in the game that <clears throat> looked like a touchdown based on all the replays that were shown that was called out of bounds. Um, and so Penn Hills was out of the playoffs because they lost that game. Bell Vernon beating Elizabeth forward handily to win the conference title there. Steel Valley beating Sarah Catholic for the second year in a row um, by an identical score, actually, which is that weird. Is um, to win the Allegheny Conference in 2A and then Greensburg Central Catholic winning the Eastern Conference in 1A. So let's talk about our streak watch, which when we came into last Whoa. week, we said, you know, there's a lot of matchups here between some some top teams on the board, right? That Seneca Valley was playing Aliquippa. So the two longest winning streaks in the state went head to head. One of them was going to lose and it was Aliquippa that beat Central Valley. So the Quips at 21 games in a row now have the longest winning streak in the wow. state. Um, and congratulations to Knock uh, for snapping their 13 game losing streak with a big win over Valley at the end of the year. So that's some nice off season momentum for Knock, um, you know, to, to build on for next year, even though they were, Oh, and nine coming into the game. It always feels good to win that last one. Yeah. I tell you what, the active winning streaks really took it on the nose last week. They did. They did. Yep. Um, and, and I think the other thing that speaks to though, is how well the Whippeal scheduled the non-conference games this year that they scheduled a lot of non-conference games between like teams that, you know, if they had scheduled non-conference games for say Bell Vernon against mm -hmm. just a bunch of other three, a opponents, then they probably, they would have been right up at the top of this list. They would have run through them all just like they did, you know, once they got into conference play, heck Elizabeth Ford was nine and oh, and Bell Vernon blew them out of the water. Right. Mm -hmm. But you know, for Bell Vernon, they made them play, Penn Trafford, they made him play Laurel Highlands, they made him play McKeesport, right? So they played these tougher, they played Thomas Jefferson, they played these tougher opponents from higher classifications, and now Bell Vernon battle tested and ready to go for the playoffs, mm -hmm. but they just don't have the winning streak. So, you know, not you all, know, not now all is, eight and two teams are made the same, I'll say that. Right now is when you want to start the winning streak. So, yeah. oh my, yep. my battery here. My battery's going down here for some reason. Uh -oh. I got you got to plug in. I'll talk while oh, you there plug we go. In. Okay. All right. I did. I think I did plug it in. Um, I thought All I right. plugged in my computer. Uh, let, me, let me check here real quick. Oh my okay. gosh. On the on the conference winning streak side, the top two uh, got knocked out by teams lower down the list. So Aliquippa now has a 16 game conference winning streak and tops the list. And Bell Vernon, which was down there in sixth with that big win over Elizabeth forward continues their conference winning streak as well on the playoff streak. Watch, um, you know, coming into the season, when we talked about this at the beginning of the year, we had almost an identical slide um, in our season preview show. And we pretty much said, you know, everyone who's got these long playoff streaks looks pretty good and looks like they'll be able to make it. And everyone who's on the drought side, looks like they're at least a couple <laughs> years away. And that was pretty much true. That was pretty it was much pretty much how it happened, same. right? You know, the only difference was North Catholic, who moved up in classification from 3A to 4A this year, um, missing the playoffs after a decade of, of making the playoffs. And we talked at the outset of the show of how close they were to making the playoffs. So, mm -hmm. yeah, every everyone else pretty much continued along here. Um, and just incredible so shots at the top. I mean, Thomas Jefferson and Aliquippa haven't missed the playoffs since 1994. I mean, that's just insane. So, yeah, it's it's incredible streaks there. All right. Our Whipple Blitz Brute Athletic Player of the Week is Quentin Martin from Bell Vernon, wow. who in that big win over Elizabeth Forward was clearly the best player on the field. Um, I would say arguably he's the best junior in the entire state. Uh, 174 rushing yards, three rushing touchdowns and two receiving touchdowns. It was the Quentin Martin show and they could not stop him. Some other top performers from this past week. Uh, this is mostly the six touchdown club with Eric Moore from Plum rushing for six touchdowns, Matt Sieg from Fort Cherry going for six touchdowns, and Johnny Huff from Nishanik going for six touchdowns. Unfortunately, Johnny Huff needed um, about 80 passing yards to join the 1,000-1,000 club, oh. but he only had – he ran for so many yards, he only had like 35 passing yards, so he didn't quite get there, um, but still a great performance for Johnny. Jamal Brown from Upper St. Clair with five total touchdowns, and then Landon Stevenson from Mapletown um, in a show-off with uh, West Green and Colin Brady, who was the Whippeal rushing leader. Uh, 
Landon went off for 250 plus, which gave him not only a shout out on our player of the week board, but also the Whippeal rushing title, wow. um, which is, you know, pretty darn cool uh, to do it kind of in that head to head showdown the last week of the season. Um, and, and, you know, Colin Brady came into this game about 80 yards ahead of Landon Stevenson. So Landon needed a big game to do it, and he most certainly did. Wow. Good for him. Yes. Okay. And finally, uh, congratulations to our conference champions, um, you know, across all 17 conferences. So as I mentioned before on the show that the Whippeal will award shared conference titles to any teams that finish with the same record um, at the top, kind of regardless of tiebreakers. So Franklin Regional, because they lost to Penn Trafford, finished four and one in the conference, as did Gateway. So even though Gateway or even though Franklin Regional beat Gateway head to head, um, they will both get conference champion plaques and be recognized as conference champions. Um, and that's important because in the uh, 4A Big 7 Conference, Laurel Highlands, uh, thanks to Thomas Jefferson's win over McKeesport, was in a three-way tie for the conference title. And regardless of tiebreakers, Laurel Highlands is recognized now as a conference champion for the first time in their school history. So congratulations to the Mustangs and Coach Colasar, who we had on the show earlier. Yeah, this year. I, yeah, I reached out to him on Twitter and uh, was, God, when I saw that come across there, so happy for them, so happy for him uh, because we know how much time and effort and sacrifice that it's taken that team to get to that level, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, think about it. Last year, they won their first playoff game in school history. This year, they won their first conference title in school history. I mean, you know, what they've what they've been able to do with Coach Colasar in the short amount of time he's been there is just incredible. And for him to do it at his alma mater, like how cool is that? You yeah, know, no, that he I mean, that he played there and now gets to coach there and um, you know gets to have historic seasons leading this team. So that's yeah, it's absolutely. really cool. For it is. It is really cool. Yeah. All right. So that pretty much recaps what happened this past week. But now we're moving into Ooh. the playoffs. So let's talk about the playoffs. A um, little bit of playoff history, just so people know as we go through this, we're going to talk about every team that made the playoffs because they all deserve shout outs. Um, but, you know, the, the Whippeal was first formalized in you know, around 1914. Um, by the mid 1930s, they had three classifications which were labeled, you know, double A, A, and B. In the 1970s, when the Pittsburgh Catholic League consolidated with the WPIAL, um, they changed those designations, but they kept three classes and they became A, double A, and triple A. Um, so basically anything that appears as double A that has a year before 1973 was actually kind of like the triple A level. Um, in 1980, the state uh, put in a fourth classification. Um, and obviously in 1988, they started the statewide playoffs. And then in 2016, we went to six classifications. Um, and the, the one thing I'll say here is that I am always consistent in saying, you know, if it was something that happened between 1980 and 2015, I'll use just the A's. If it's in the sixth classification era, I will use the number and the letter. So that kind of helps oh. designate what happened when, uh, because, and here's the reason why, right? Because winning a 4A title in the sixth classification era means that you were, you know, sort of the bottom mm -hmm. half of the, the bottom half of the teams that would have been triple A, but winning a quad A title in the four classification era means you are one of the biggest schools and one at the biggest. You were, yeah, you were at the so, highest level. Right. So it's not a, it's not an apples to apples comparison to say, Oh, you know, central Catholic winning a quad A title and Thomas Jefferson winning a four A title is the same thing. It's not, it's, it's different. Not. Yeah. Um, so that's why I like to use the different nomenclature. See, All I, right. I see even I learned something. There we go. So let's talk about 6A. Um, we'll, we'll go through this fairly quickly. Won't get too deep into the matchups because these teams all have a bye week this week and we'll start the playoffs in the semifinals next weekend. Uh, championship game will be at Norwin. North Allegheny was, is the top seed in the playoffs and these teams are seeded um, just based on the order of finish during the regular season. Um, so as you can see, North Allegheny was 
the top ranked offensive and defensive team and is the number one seed in the playoffs. Um, you know, interestingly enough, Mount Lebanon defending champions has the number two seed thanks to a head to head win over Central Catholic, but they have to play Central uh, in the semifinals anyway. So let's talk about North Allegheny, the number one seed in Class 6A. Uh, their only loss this season came against Pine Richland in a non-conference game. Uh, highest scoring team in 6A and the best defensive team. Uh, one thing that I think is interesting um, was just how tight and low scoring 6A was this year. And like, yeah, we'll talk about this more next week. But, you know, for the, the top scoring team to be at 28 points, you know, as we go through and get into, you know, 3A, 2A, 1A, like, 28 points would have had you towards the bottom of, you know, those offenses. Um, and that's not saying that those offenses are any better than North Allegheny. It's just versus their competition. They were able to put more points on the board. Um, but, you know, North Allegheny's one of the, uh, you know, 19th consecutive playoff appearance. Um, haven't won a Whitfield title since 2012, though. Um, and actually that 2020 appearance when they lost to Central Catholic was their first trip back to the championship game since winning that 2012 title. So if they're able to get past Canna Mac, they'll get back to the championship game once again. Speaking of the Big Macs, this is their fourth playoff appearance in the last five years, but they've only won one playoff game in school history. Uh, pretty good offense this year, but struggled to stop people on defense. Um, Cannonsburg, which preceded Canna McMillan, uh, did win the 1950 class a championship Ooh. uh thanks to a tie because there was no overtime so they played the game and they tied and uh you know both teams were awarded a title um but yeah so that's the first semifinal. the other one features defending 6a they got in <laughs> yes defending 6a whippeo and state <coughs> champions mount lebanon um they did get in thanks to that 31 nothing win over canon mac the last week of the season um the ninth consecutive playoff appearance for the Blue Devils uh, coming off that state championship year. You know, they've had to do a lot of things this year, um, endure a lot of adversity, showed a lot of grit and tenacity that, uh, you know, they had to replace 25 starters that all graduated. They had a number of injuries, including a quarterback, obviously, yeah. ar arguably the most important position on the field. Um, so uh, they've endured a lot, but they got into the playoffs with the number two seed. Uh, thanks to that head-to-head -head win over Central Catholic. And, and that win over Central, they came back from 16-0 down in the fourth quarter and kicked a game-winning field goal as time expired to win that game 17-16. So, um, you know, every little game matters. Amazing how, and, how you, you just look back on those little things that meant everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and Mount Lebanon closed the year on a three-game winning streak also. So this is a team that, you know, like we said, had to replace a lot of starters, but really kind of found their groove, you know, heading into the postseason. Yeah, playing their best football, that's for sure. Yep, absolutely. Central Catholic, on the other hand, um, I, I'll say is a team that's underperformed all year. You know, a team that I had high hopes for, thought could be a contender not only for the Whitfield title, but also for the state title. And they're still absolutely a contender for the Whitfield title. Um, you know, they've reached the championship game um, in eight out of the last nine years. And I think four in a row now, um, but or three in a row. But nevertheless, you know, they're, they're always a contender and they only have to win one playoff game to get back to the championship game. But, you know, two and two conference record, six and four overall record. But at the same time, their losses were that one point loss to Mount Lebanon and a seven to three loss to North Allegheny. So they weren't out of either of those games that they played against conference opponents. Um, but, you know, we'll just... All these games were close this year in 6A. So we'll see what happens, you know, once we get into it next week um, when the 6A playoffs kick off. In 5A, uh, this one wow. is so tight because only eight teams made the playoffs. So there were some good teams. You know, Hempfield missed the playoffs. Penn Hills missed the playoffs. Um, you know, North Hills, obviously, at 3-7, and seven made the playoffs because of their head-to-head -head win over Penn Hills. That was another one. Penn Hills... Penn Hills blew a, what was it, like a, a 20 to 20 to 7 lead in that game, and it went to overtime, and North Hills won by an extra point in overtime, and North Hills wound up getting the last playoff spot because of it. So, yeah, That's a lot of, crazy, lot of close yeah. games. You know, Penn Trafford winning in overtime the last week of the year to get into the playoffs. So um, this, this field is wide open, though. Um, you know, I think that – 
statistically upper St. Clair looks pretty good offensively and defensively, but they got a really tough first round draw against a good gateway team. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, you know, and, and they have to go on the road and play. Um, so hard to you know, believe the, the number one seed there, you feel like almost the jury's still out. So, yeah. And, and, and Bethel played North Hills earlier in the year and, and beat them. Um, and Bethel's only loss was against central Catholic. So, you know, that's a, that's a good Bethel park team. Mm-hmm. They definitely deserve the number one seed. Uh, but Pine Richland's playing better than anyone else right now. Pine Richland made a change at quarterback uh, about halfway through the season, put Ryan Palmieri in. He had been at running back previously and, with Palmieri at quarterback and Ethan Pilar at running back, they've been really, really good. So, uh, you know, if I had to bet on somebody right now, I'd bet on Pine Richland because they're playing, they're playing better than anyone else. So let's talk about some of these matchups. Bethel Park as the number one seed, um, you know, ran through the Allegheny Six Conference. And, uh, you know, this is, this is a team that consistency has been the hallmark of their program. We interviewed Coach Delalo earlier this year. Um, they've qualified for the playoffs in 21 out of the last 22 years. Their only miss was during the COVID year, which was just a weird year anyways. Um, and, and they've had some success. You know, they won the 2008 Whitfield Quad A title and went to the state championship game where they lost in overtime. So, you know, this is a good team that's been very solid for a long time. Um, and they've got a good stable of running backs and, and we'll see what happens. I think they'll be fine this week against North Hills, um, who <laughs> basically, you know, this is, this is the story of why you don't give up on a season, right? They mm-hmm. started zero and four, but then they won three conference games, including well, that overtime no, win over Penn Hills. It's like, you don't give up on a WPIAL because it's only the conference schedule that matters, not mm-hmm. your entire schedule. Yes. Yep. That is correct. Yep. Um, and for North Hills, it's their ninth appearance in the last 11 years, but no playoff wins since 2010. Um, and you know, they're, they're a team that's had some injury issues over the last few weeks, kind of limped into the playoffs, got blown out by Pine Richland this past week. So I I've got to think Bethel park is in pretty good shape to win their opening round game and then take on the winner of gateway and upper St. Clair. So gateway, you know, a team that a lot of people had favored coming into the season. Do you, do you um, think that like gateway and Pittsburgh central Catholic are almost like the same kind of team? Just like you really had high hopes for them coming into the season and it just didn't materialize for them when they got between the lines. Uh, yes and no. Um, so, so here's what I'll say, right. That the gateways seven and three record, is a little deceiving too. And this is, this is one of those scheduling things, right? They beat Mount Lebanon earlier in the year. They beat Woodland Hills in non-conference play. They started conference play with a loss to Franklin regional. Okay. Franklin regional is good this year. They won the conference title, right? But then they came back, they beat plum, they beat Hempfield, they beat Penn Trafford pretty handily. And yeah, they lost two other last three, but their losses were to McKeesport and central Catholic and neither of which are in their classification. So, you know, Gateway's only lost one game against the 5A team this year. Um, so it's one of those things where the Whitfield scheduled them against some pretty good non-conference opponents, and they lost. They won a couple and lost a couple. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, I think that's kind of the story in 5A across the state. I think that 5A, quite honestly, not necessarily like the marquee uh, classification, you know, this year in the state. In fact, I would argue that, uh, 5A and 6A are not the marquee classifications this year. I think it's 4A, 3A, and 2A, but that's just me. Oh, yeah, yeah. 4A is the deepest classification, not only in the Whitfield, but statewide, absolutely. Yeah. And I think 5A, 5A is wide open, though, because you have a lot of teams exactly. that played each other in non-conference play and all kind of beat each other. Not necessarily so, great teams, but yeah. they're all very similar skill level. Yes, yes. I would say other than North Hills – any of these teams is capable of going out and winning this, right? That any of these teams can go out and beat the team across from them on any given day. It's just which team shows up, you know? Sure. Um, yeah. And then upper St. Clair, uh, kind of similarly, you know, they lost that game to Bethel park, uh, with the conference title on the line, but their other loss came against Cannon McMillan, a six, a team in non-conference play. So, 
you know, Upper St. Clair's, a, you know, they can score a lot of points. They can run the ball. They can throw the ball. Uh, they've had, they've played they're, three. They're a solid team. They're a solid team. They've played three different quarterbacks this year too. Um, and now have a freshman, Ethan Hellman playing quarterback who they just put in uh, towards the end of the season. So, um, you know, they've, they've had a few different guys playing at that position. Uh, but it seems like they've kind of settled on a starting lineup now. Their 23rd consecutive playoff appearance. So, you know, this is a, a good Upper St. Clair team that's a, a good, solid program. You know, seven-time Whitfield champions taking on a gateway team that's also seven-time Whitfield champion. So this is a really marquee first-round matchup between yeah. these two teams um, that, that have met a bunch of times in the playoffs before. Pine Richland is the number two seed who I said, you know, is probably my favorite to win this. If I had to pick one, um, they're playing the best out of anyone right now. It's their 10th consecutive playoff appearance. Um, you know, there's a, a strong pedigree of winning here um, going back to, you know, some of their previous coaches with Eric Kasparowitz. Um, and, you know, now their head coach, John Ladon uh, won the Whippeal and state title was Penn Hills head coach a couple years ago in 2018. So, um, you know, John knows how to win and Pine Richland's playing really well right now. Um, so I would not at all be surprised, but you know, they've got a first round matchup against Penn Trafford, who wow. is the defending five, a champion. So actually kind of cool that you have the last two five, a state champs going head to head in the first that round, is, because that is a great stat. Yeah, because Penn Trafford won it last year and Pine Richland won it the year before. So um, obviously very different teams than the ones that won the state title. But nevertheless, um, you know, they're, they're wearing the same helmets. They're wearing the same uniforms. They're representing the same community. So pretty cool to see them going head to head. And last year was Penn Trafford's first ever Whippeal title um, and obviously first state title. So that was really cool for them. And now just getting into the playoffs again this year with that win last week, um, you know, they've put things together through down the stretch of the season. Their quarterback Conlon green um, is a temple commit as a defensive lineman, kind of defensive wow. end edge rusher. And they put him at quarterback this year and he's got a <laughs> huge arm and he's just been lighting it up. I mean, he's been throwing the ball all over the place. It's been incredible to watch him. So, um, you know, you this can do is, that in high school. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is a dangerous Penn Trafford team. That's, that's got talented players players all over as well wow. franklin regional is the number three seed after losing to uh penn trafford this past week um you know they're as we talked about before we interviewed their head coach uh lance getzi earlier this year um you know really have a lot of strong community support for their program which is really cool to see um you know winning the conference title this year for the first time in a while um you know was it first time since 2013 i think it was the last time they won yeah 2013 was the last time they won so um you know first time in a decade that franklin regional won a conference title and they've once again another been another one of those programs that's a hallmark of consistency of qualified for the playoffs 18 times in the last 19 years but only one playoff win in the last six years so right. you know they've been there but now they're looking to do something you know that that hasn't mm -hmm. that they haven't done in a while and they have a first round game against Woodland Hills who we started the year uh, by interviewing Woodland Hills head coach. So yeah. This is, I mean, this and is they, the run they of, like, came out of the, interviewed. They came out of the block strong winning a, you know, a game that I saw them play the peach bowl uh, group down in uh, Chambersburg and they looked yeah. really strong. Yeah. And they're a good, they're a good team, a good program. And, you know, Anytime you see the turquoise and black coming at you, it's, you know, it's, it's never an easy out in the playoffs. And um, it's awfully cool to look at on the field. That's all I can yeah. say. Oh yeah, it is. They, I mean, they, they, they have the coolest look in the whip. I mean, it's just, you know, it is. it's I mean, very, it's ultra cool. Yeah, it is. I mean, don't get me wrong. Aliquippa with their all black jerseys last week looked super cool as well. Um, you know, in Clareton, when they go with the all black jerseys, looks really cool, but, but Woodland Hills with the turquoise and black, they just look fast. They mm -hmm. just look fast out there. That's all I can say. Yeah. They, um, they're but, good. They look sharp. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're 33rd playoff appearance. Um, you know, five time Whippeal champions. Um, it's just a, just a strong program all around. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty cool to see everything come together for, for Woodland Hills. Um, and 
Actually, I think that qualified in that should be 26 of the last 27 years because they had a really long oh, okay. streak. So that's a typo on my part. Sorry to the Woodland oh, well. Hills folks. Oh, oh. All right, on to 4A, which as we've said is the deepest oh, classification. My gosh. And three teams got buys here. So Aliquippa and Central Valley, after their epic game this past week, got the number one and number two seeds. The number three seed, a little bit controversial, went to Thomas Jefferson uh, because TJ had the tiebreaker over McKeesport and Laurel Highlands um, for the conference title there. TJ getting it ahead of Armstrong, who is the greater Allegheny conference. How did, uh, wait, somebody's got to, we got to do like a rewind here. How yeah. did McKeesport end up the fifth seed? Are you kidding me? I mean, uh, are you kidding me? I mean, well, how they end up, that's all right. I, I'm just saying, yeah, you know, so, I, look, the human element involved sometimes might not be the best, but the fifth, that's, Wow, that's ouch. Well, yeah, and and here's what I'll say is the the thing that Whitfield did this year that they hadn't done in past years, but I'm kind of glad they did do it, is they seeded teams in they actually listened to the tiebreakers to seed them. So like last year, thinking back to the playoffs in 5A, um, Penn Hills, Pine Richland, and North Hills tied for their conference title. They were they all split head to head. Penn Hills technically had the tiebreaker to be the top seeded team, but the Whippeal gave Pine Richland the number two seed and Penn Hills like the number five seed last year in 5A. So this year, they actually listened to the tiebreakers and ordered teams in the order that the tiebreakers said they should have been. So in the Big Seven Conference, Thomas Jefferson had the tiebreaker to be first, McKeesport had the tiebreaker to be second, and Laurel Highlands had the tiebreaker oh, to be third. Wow. So since TJ had the tiebreaker to be first, TJ went ahead of McKeesport. And then I think, I mean, seeding them fourth versus fifth, not a, not a huge difference. Um, but I think, I mean, if I, if I had to guess, some of that would have been that, you know, Blackhawk is the only team with a losing record um in the playoffs you know mars was kind of the, was the 12th mm -hmm. seed they didn't want to rematch mars against armstrong in a conference game so they kind of put armstrong at four and mckeesport at five Look, four versus is, five doesn't matter they're going to play in the tough. quarterfinals it, anyways it, it's a very strong uh be a very strong classification it is we're going to make everybody happy yeah uh, um, hey, and, listen, uh, there is something going on in the front of my house that I have to check out here real second. So just carry on. All right. I, I will, will keep be talking. right back. All right. Sure. All right. I'll be right back. I will keep talking. There's something going on up there. That's not good. All right. So in 4A, we talked about Aliquippa getting the number one overall seed after beating Central Valley in that epic game this past week. The Quips 7 0 in conference, 9 0 overall. Uh, you know, among the top teams, both offensively and defensively, and just everything Aliquip has been able to do over time as a 1A size school playing up in classification, and then being forced up into 4A. Um, you know, now is the number one seed, the defending Whippeal and state champions in 4A. Um, not only the 28 straight playoff appearances, which is the most in the Whippeal tied with Thomas Jefferson and, and their all time record, uh, but also the 14 straight Whippeal finals, which is just an incredible, incredible streak that they've been able to maintain over time um just an awesome stuff happening in aliquippa um, and we were so thankful to be able to interview mike warfield their head coach so quips is the 18 time whipfield champions nobody's done it as many times as them um and as the number one seed obviously the favorites to once again continue that streak of making it back to heinz field the number two seed central valley after losing that game to aliquippa didn't really hurt them much at all in the standings uh and in the seating uh central valley obviously snapping that uh, longest losing or sorry, longest winning streak in the state. Um, but nevertheless, Central Valley getting the number two seed, which potentially sets up another rematch uh, with Aliquippa for the Whitfield title if the seeds hold and it goes chalk throughout the playoffs. Um, Central Valley has been incredibly strong since the 2010 merger of Center and Manaka. Um, three time defending Whitfield 3A champions, two time defending state. 3A champions. Um, you know, they've made the playoffs in 12 out of the 13 years that they've been a school um, and won the Whitfield title five times. So incredibly strong program. And they have faced off against TJ a few times in the playoffs. So could make for an interesting one if the seeds hold because the number three seed is the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars, a team that, you know, lost a couple early season games, lost some non-conference games, and then lost that game to Laurel Highlands and kind of got forgot about and flew under the radar. And then all of a sudden in week nine, TJ comes back and beats 
uh, McKeesport and, you know, winds up winning the, the tiebreakers for the conference title and getting that number three seed and the third by uh, like Aliquippa, their 28th consecutive playoff appearance. They've won five of the last seven Whitfield titles um, in the classifications that they've played in between AAA and 4A, um, you know, between the four classification era and six classification era um and, and tj just another incredibly strong program um that now is is playing some really good football here coming down the stretch and, and getting might into be, the might be the best story um you know in a, a story of resurgence you know because like you said everybody kind of forgot about them yeah and then boom big win i mean actually a very strong win against a very good team yep and here they are like the number three seed with a buy Mm -hmm. incredible yep and and the one thing this tj team can do is play defense and you know defense wins championships and defense travels so that is that is absolutely true so starting at the top of the bracket here montour got the number eight seed uh montour got the eight seed thanks to a uh one point overtime win over west allegheny in week nine um this you know once again some of the usual suspects that um you know 14th playoff appearance in the last 16 years reached the whipple championship game in 2017 uh won the whipple title in 2011 um and if you know kind of been one of those teams that usually makes the playoffs but doesn't make it super far um They've had, they actually wound up playing Thomas <laughs> Jefferson a lot in the playoffs. And I, I cannot tell you how many times they've played TJ. It seems like every year they wind up playing TJ. They probably won't play TJ this year because they're on opposite halves of the bracket. But, um, you know, Montour getting into the playoffs and they will face a Hampton team that got in thanks to winning that tiebreaker uh, with Mars and North Catholic. You know, we talked about That's that at crazy. the beginning of the show, um, thanks to those tiebreaker points. Um, and Hampton's a team that's been uh, pretty good offensively this year. Um, but struggled a little bit to stop people on defense. So um, should be should be a good game between Hampton and Montour. Um, and, you know, Hampton a team is, that we really didn't talk about a lot, uh, hardly at all this year. Yeah, yeah. They, they kind of flew under the radar, sort of right in the middle of the pack there um, in the Greater Allegheny Conference. Um, you know, lost to the top teams, but beat the bottom teams and then, you know, wound up in a three-way tie for the last playoff spot. Yeah. Um, but Hampton's a team never made it to a Whippeal championship game. Um, and, you know, 11 playoff wins and 16 appearance, or this will be their 16th appearance. So, um, you know, they've, they, you know, make the playoffs, but don't usually go very far. So nice kind of convergence of storylines here between Hampton and Montour to kind of see who's able to at least get through the first game and get a game with Aliquippa in the second round. Sure. Um, Armstrong got the number four seed, a little bit controversial being as they were a conference champion and they they've looked really good this year with their quarterback, Cade Nolson. Their only loss was, uh, you know, that close game that they played earlier this year against Aliquippa that it was yeah. tied going into the fourth quarter and the Quips kind of ran away with it, wound up winning. Uh, I think it was 28 to 14. They wound up winning that game, but nevertheless, you know, Armstrong's only loss was to Aliquippa and they've been, they've been really good this year. Um, another success story of a merger that, you know, Armstrong was formed by the merger of Ford city and Catanning. Um, this is just their second conference title since the merger last year, they won their first playoff game since the merger. So um, it's you know, a process, it's a good story. It is a process. And especially when you bring two schools together that were former kind of rivals, um, you know, that, you know, it's, it, it is a process kind of figuring out how they're going to play nice in the sandbox. But, you know, now that it's been, you know, almost a day, seven years since the merger, I think, you know, things seem to be working out pretty well and, you know, winning and having success makes up for a lot of things as well. Sure. Armstrong will take on the 13th seeded Blackhawk Cougars, uh, the only team with a losing record in the 4A playoffs. Um, Blackhawks struggled a little bit on offense this year, um, but the, the bottom of the Parkway Conference was not very good. So Blackhawk pretty easily beat the bottom teams in the conference, uh, played some tight games against some of the, the higher up teams in the conference, um, but nevertheless uh, gets into the playoffs, um, which is, is kind of cool to see for the third time in five years. So first time on this show that we've talked about Blackhawk being in the yeah. playoffs, uh, but they did reach the semifinals in two straight years in 2018 and 2019. And Blackhawk was a team that in the 1990s was arguably one of the strongest programs in the WPIL. I think in the decade between like, was it like night? Uh, shoot. I'm going to look it up basically in like the, <laughs> the, the decade from the, the late eighties 
through the the mid 90s i think um blackhawk won like three whippeal titles and reached the reached the championship game five times okay yeah between 1988 and 1996 they reached the they reached the whippeal championship game six times and won four titles wow so you know in that decade arguably one of the best teams in the WPIAL. Well, in that 10 year span, I wouldn't call yeah. it a decade. I mean, in a 10 year span, okay. okay. right. Of decades are like 1990 to 1999. Okay. 10 year span, you know, maybe more apropos. Yeah. Okay. Well, still, <laughs> still, okay. In the, in the 1990s, then if you want to, if you want to, if you want to go that in route. the decade of the nineties. Right. Right. In, in the decade. All right. In the decade of the nineties, they, they won four Whippeal titles and reached the championship game six times there you and go. reached the semifinals one other time. So <laughs> yeah, in, in the decade of the nineties that, you know, 88, they also reached the championship game and lost. So still in the, okay. in the nineties, they were one of the best teams in the WPIL. Um, you know, haven't, haven't been quite as good since then. They made it back to a couple championship games in the early two thousands, um, but haven't, haven't been quite as good since that, big run in the 1990s and you know in that decade of the 90s they made it to the piaa uh triple a championship game yeah so three, three times. times i mean yep. so it is a program with six with the pedigree of success mm -hmm. absolutely the number five seed is mckeesport uh we talked about kind of why they were the number five seed other than aliquippa and thomas jefferson they it have hard to believe that the second longest playoff streak Yes, I mean, but just, you know, one game, just like basically yeah. just drop like a rock. Yeah. And, and really, I mean, if for, they win that game, they're probably the number three seed rather or than number Thomas two. Jefferson. Oh yeah. They're, they're either the number two or number three seed if they win that game. Absolutely. Yes. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily take their seed number as indicative of their, uh, regular season performance um, because they are one of the top teams and they are, I mean, a, thinking about a potential semifinal of Aliquippa and McKeesport, you know, I think, I think I tweeted that Aliquippa probably wasn't too happy to see McKeesport <laughs> wind up on the same half of the bracket as them after mm -hmm. they had to go to double overtime when they played last year. So, sure. um, you know, it, it's one of those things where I, I think the other thing that the Whippeal wanted to do was they wanted to separate Aliquippa and Central Valley into different halves of the bracket and separate TJ and McKeesport into separate halves of the bracket. Um, so it's a lot of sense. In order to do that, point. that is a great they point. Kind of had to give one of them the number three seed. Yeah, no, that's a great point. McKeesport will take on the Mars Fighting Planets um, with Coach Eric Kasparowitz, who is now back in the playoffs with Mars. Um, you know, changing that program from the run heavy program to the pass happy program that he likes to run. Um, big difference, you know, still a learning curve this year, but you can see in their points per game. I mean, they certainly lit up the scoreboard, um, but all, we're also giving up some points on the defensive end as well. Uh, but still for Mars, you know, they've been a model of consistency, 17 playoff appearances in the last 18 years. Um, haven't won a playoff game since 2015. So haven't won one during the sixth classification era. Um, and also <laughs> I will say they have, I believe the most playoff appearances of any team that has not won a Whippeal title. Wow. Um, yeah. So I, I think that's right. It's either them or Freeport now that Penn Trafford won one because Penn Trafford had the, the mark, but yeah. Okay. Um, Highlands is the number six seed on the bottom half of the bracket. So the winner of uh, another one loss team. Wow. One and they're a number team. six seed. Ouch. Yeah. Well, and, and that's just it that, you know, you had, you, you had, all these teams that just had one loss. Right. And you know, how do you see them? Okay. Highlands lost to Armstrong. So obviously Highlands has to be below Armstrong on the bracket. And um, you know, but it's, you know, Highlands is a good program. We got to interview their head coach, Matt Bonislawski earlier this yeah. year. And uh, you know, really cool to see what he's been able to do there. Highlands has a four year starting quarterback in Chandler Timmons, um, you know, a really good running back in Luke Bombalski and a, a dynamic player in Aaron Randolph that they've been running wildcat stuff with. And he had that remember that six touchdown game that he had where he scored six in one quarter. Yeah. Uh, I think it was on six consecutive touches too, which was pretty wild. Um, so yeah, you know, Highlands, this is one of their best teams they've had in a long time. 
um, which is is really cool to see. Um, but you know, potential looming quarterfinal game with Thomas Jefferson if they're able to get past Latrobe in the first round of the playoffs. Yeah, what well, um, the team did? Did we talk about Latrobe at all we, this year? We hardly did. Um, and <laughs> this is this is one of those success stories of Latrobe moved down in classification from five A to four A, and you know did what they needed to do in their yeah. conference. And, uh, you know, they, they beat Trinity, they beat Connellsville, they beat Ringgold. And that was enough to get them in the playoffs. Actually, they played a really close game against Laurel Highlands too. Um, Latrobe had a really good running back, has a really good running back in Robert Fulton, who was leading the Whippeal and rushing early in the season, um, kind of tapered off a little bit later in the year as they started to work in some other players, but uh, really cool for Latrobe just to get back into the playoffs um, their only playoff win came in 1968. Um, so they'll take wow. on a, a Highlands team who is, you know, looking for their first playoff win since 2014. And then the winner of that gets Thomas Jefferson. So uh, wow. it'll be, it, it'll be interesting, but you know, it's, it's always fun to see those teams that haven't had a lot of historical success go up against each other because someone's going to win and someone's going to get a good story to tell. Yeah, exactly. Right. Before yep. they lose to TJ. So <laughs> they're not guaranteed to lose to TJ. I, I mean, I Laurel that. Highlands beat TJ. You never know. You never know. Yep, absolutely. And speaking of Laurel Highlands first, uh, conference title in school history this year after winning their first playoff game in school history last year uh they got the number seven seed um and, and this is another one right i mean they're seven and two but they beat tj lost to mckeesport and their other loss was a non-conference game against bell vernon who is the top team in Ar so, arguably yeah i mean a heavyweight yeah yeah so this is another you know very very good team um you know in this bracket and with Rodney Gallagher at quarterback, who's going to West Virginia next year. I mean, he's a dynamic playmaker, arguably one of the most exciting players in the WPIL anytime he gets the ball in his hands. Um, and, you know, the stuff he's been able to do over his four-year career at Laurel Highlands, not just on the football field, but also on the basketball court, winning Whitfield titles for them there too, with Keandre DeShields, who's their wide receiver, and, you know, some of the other talent they have around them. Shout out to Coach Colasar and everything yeah. he's been able to do with the Laurel Highlands program. All right, and Laurel Highlands will take on West Allegheny, um, who is the number 10 seed. West A, um, you know, we talked about them a little bit early in the year because they played Alan yeah. Clippa to a three-point game. It was a 1916 game early in the year. Yeah. They're like, oh, man, watch, watch out. You know, West Allegheny might be, might be pretty darn good this year. Um, but they've, they've, I'll say, struggled a little bit down the stretch and, um, you know, struggle – I don't know. I don't know if struggles relative, um, but you know, they got, they got thumped by central Valley. They barely beat Blackhawk 16 to 13. Um, and they lost that game to Montour, which dropped them from, you know, being the clear third place team in the conference to the fourth place spot. Um, so, uh, you know, struggled a little bit offensively. I'll say the last couple of games with that, you know, eking out the win over Blackhawk, Losing to Central Valley 55 to 7, which whatever, everyone got killed by Central Valley, um, except for Aliquippa, obviously. Um, but then losing to Montour, I think, um, you know, sends sends West A into the playoffs on a little bit of a cold streak, but they're a, a storied program. You know, when Bob Palco was the coach there, um, they were were really good winning eight Whippeal titles. Um, and they haven't been back to the playoffs since Bob Palco left. So Bob won. You know, the Whitfield and state title last year at Mount Lebanon and West A's loss was Mount Lebanon's gain. And, <laughs> uh, you know, but it's, it's good to see West A getting back in the playoffs. And this is another success story of moving down in classification that they had been kind of yeah. struggling in the, the 5A conference that had, uh, you know, Bethel Park and Upper St. Clair and those schools and now moved down and were able to have some success in 4A. Yeah. Good so moving on to 3A, we talked about Bell Vernon coming in, and, and this is a really top-heavy one. Really, the top four teams are the top four teams between Elizabeth Forward, Bell Vernon, Freeport, and Avonworth. Um, just reading them off the offensive ranks, but seed-wise, it's Bell Vernon 1, Avonworth 2, Elizabeth <clears throat> Forward 3, and Freeport 4, which I think was more or less how we kind of predicted it at the beginning of the year, uh, that it was going to play out. 
Um, and, and I'm really excited for that potential Avonworth Elizabeth forward game, um, you know, in the semifinals because that's that's going to be a doozy because those are two really good teams um, on on both sides of the ball. So let's talk about Bell Vernon. Like we said at the outset, all seven and two teams are not made the same. You know, Bell Vernon lost non-conference games that were close games to teams from higher classifications. Um, you know, granted they beat a they beat a good Laurel Highlands team. They lost to a good McKeesport team, 14 to six. They lost to a good Penn Trafford team, 14, 13. Mm. And, you know, they, they beat <laughs> TJ. And once they got into conference play, they just rolled over everybody. I mean, the 48 points they scored against Elizabeth forward last week was their lowest output in conference play. Um, and, you know, the 14 points they gave up to EF last week was also the most points they had given up in conference play. So Bell Vernon, clearly the number one team in 3A. Um, you know, we interviewed Coach Matt Humbert last year. Um, it would be really cool to see him get his first title because he's one of the great up and coming coaches in the WPIAL. And really the only thing missing from his resume is a Whippeal title. Uh, Bell Vernon looking for their first Whippeal title since 1995. They've gotten close a few times. They lost mm -hmm. the finals in 2019 and last year. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see. See, if they're able to get we'll there this year. Yeah. I mean, they, you know, maybe it's the best of both worlds that they kind of moved down and, some of their, you know, the other guys either stayed or moved up. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe the stars are aligned for them this year. Let's hope so. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. Avonworth is the number two seed, has been another really strong team all season. Um, also, also fairly battle tested uh, in non-conference play. Uh, they beat a good Stowe Rocks team. Their only loss was to Central Valley. Um, so, you know, they played good non-conference opponents um, and, and really rolled through the Western Hills Conference. So Avonworth, who won the 2019 Whippeal 2A title and moved up to 3A starting in 2020, uh, now is the number two seed in the playoffs and looking to get back to the Whippeal Championship game. Um, and for potentially, um, you know, the, the second time in four <laughs> years. Elizabeth Forward is the number three seed. Um, six consecutive playoff appearance. Uh, 2020 was the first time they ever reached a Whippeal Championship game. Um, and actually, it was the first time they'd ever even reached the semifinals. So, um, you know, really cool kind of run here for Elizabeth Forward and their head coach, uh, Mike Kalati, who we interviewed on our first year of the program back in 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think Mike's had a kid since then. So congratulations to him. And, uh, you know, really, really cool for Elizabeth forward. And uh, I mean, they just ran into an absolute wrecking ball in Bell Vernon this past week, but that shouldn't take away from everything else they've done this season, um, you know, with their quarterback Zion white and wide receiver um, Zach Boyd and everything they've been able to do offensively, putting up almost 42 points a game, just a, a great season for Elizabeth forward and looking forward to what they can do in the playoffs. Absolutely. Freeport as the number four seed in the playoffs won their first conference title since 2015, um, winning the Allegheny uh, six conference. And it's their third consecutive playoff appearance and, uh, you know, reached the semis back in 2015. <clears throat> Um, but always known for their tough, hard-nosed defense, um, always a, a tough out for anybody. Um, they have reached the Whippeal title game the most times without ever winning it, 0-7 wow. in Whippeal championship games. Um, and, yeah, 32 playoff appearances, I think, is one of the most, if not the most, without winning a Whippeal title either. Yeah, another but, team uh, we didn't mention too often this year, but, hey, we are now. No, and, and I think one of the reasons we didn't mention them was because they kind of took care of business as we expected them to. Like, we ex I expected them to win the conference title because, you know, North Catholic had dominated that conference for years and Freeport had been second for so mm -hmm. long and North Catholic moved up. So I was kind of like, Freeport's kind of the natural successor here. And I didn't really think that... East Allegheny or Shadyside Academy was good enough to supplant Freeport on top of the conference. Um, and I was right. So, you know, they kind of lived up to my <laughs> expectations. <laughs> the number five seed is West Mifflin, which is another great story of moving down in classification from 4A to 3A. Um, you know, had a, a good successful season this year, making it back to the playoffs um, after a couple of years of missing the playoffs. And, um, you know, they've, they've had some historic success at West Mifflin and, um, you know, reached the Whippeal championship game three times um, since the turn of the millennium. Um, haven't won one since uh, West Mifflin North, which 
merged with West Mifflin South to become West Mifflin in general, um, won the 1963 championship. So nice, nice story for West Mifflin to yep. get back into the playoffs after moving down. They'll yeah, face absolutely. the Southmoreland Scotties, which is just another absolutely phenomenal story that, um, you know, Southmoreland's head coach or the guy who was supposed to be their head coach tragically passed away unexpectedly during the off season. And, uh, you know, the guy who was going to be his top assistant had to step in and take over Southmoreland had a 40 year playoff drop. They snapped in 2019 and now they made it back to the playoffs for the third time in four years. Wow. Uh, so really, really cool story for the Scotties. Um, great to see sort of the, the grit and tenacity and the way that community was able to rally around the program, uh, after they lost their head coach and, and around his family too. Shadyside Academy got the number six seed. So, uh, they potentially will play Elizabeth forward if they are able to get past the 11th seed South Park. So we'll talk about Shadyside first, uh, moved up from 2A to 3A this year and, uh, you know, found some success and uh, put together a pretty strong season. Um, well, Freeport was their only loss in conference play, um, played a tough non-conference schedule. I'll say they had some games against teams from higher classifications as well. So they, they, kind of got the short end of the stick on the non-conference schedules so they're better than that five and four overall record um shady sides a team that you know has won a whitfield title in their past but um has kind of been one of those teams that gets into the playoffs and you know maybe wins a game maybe doesn't uh south park has won two whitfield titles as south park snowden township which preceded south park won the 1955 whitfield title Ooh. um and south park Every time they've won a Whitfield title, has gone on to win a state title. So um, they're back in the playoffs this year for the seventh time in the last decade, made it to the semifinals in 2019. Um, and, you know, got wow. in this year on a, a three-way tie with West Mifflin and Beaver. Um, they were the lowest ranked one out of that, uh, but did just beat West Mifflin in the last week of the season to get into the playoffs. So South Park is in and, and we'll see what happens. They're a team that likes to run the ball a lot. Beaver, as I mentioned, was also part of that three-way tie. They are the number seven seed. Um, Beaver also moved down in classification this year from 4A to 3A um, and making their fourth playoff appearance in the last six years, made it to the semifinals in 2017. Their best team uh, of the sixth classification era missed the playoffs because of some stupid way that the Whippeal awarded seeding um, <laughs> back in 2016. <laughs> That was a situation where they were in a conference. It was Beaver, Beaver Falls, Aliquippa, and Central Valley. We're all in a conference together. And because only eight teams made the 3A playoffs that year, the Whippeal only took the top two plus two third place wild cards. Wow. Beaver tied with Central Valley for third place. Central Valley had the tiebreaker. So Beaver was technically fourth. So Beaver was the number one ranked team in the state before they lost their season finale to Beaver Falls. That's and crazy. And didn't even playoffs. make the playoffs. Wow. Didn't make the playoffs because they missed out on the tiebreaker and a, a team from another class or from another conference, sorry, that was like five and five made the playoffs ahead of an eight and two Beaver team because crazy. of just how it worked out. But um, and that was because the Whippeal wouldn't take more than one wild card from the same conference. But nevertheless, I digress. Beaver's back in the playoffs <laughs> this year. Um, good for them. They'll take on a Deer Lakes team that is making their third playoff appearance in school history. So if you remember back to the season opening show, um, I, that was my bold prediction for the year that Deer Lakes would make the playoffs for the third wow. time in school history. So congratulations to the Lancers on getting into the postseason. And Mount Pleasant as the number eight seed uh, will take on East Allegheny, East Allegheny was a team that really in their wins lit up the scoreboard, but in their losses struggled to score. Mount Pleasant uh, got the number eight seed after beating Southmoreland, who's their rivals in the season finale. Um, Mount Pleasant has two really good running backs on that team. Um, East Allegheny is pretty balanced offensive attack, can throw the ball, can run the ball. So should be a, a good game um, and probably a high scoring affair between yeah. those two teams with the winner uh, taking on Bell Vernon. That's that way. Yep. Moving on to 2A, where the top two teams, Steel Valley and Beaver Falls, got the two first round buys. Everything else settled out pretty much as expected. I'd say the only minor surprise uh, was that Sarah Catholic got the five seed and Keystone Oaks got the six seed. I thought those two might have been flipped. But other than that, this bracket pretty much played out as expected. Um, Steel Valley with 
that win over Sarah Catholic to win the conference title gets the top seed for the second straight year. Um, Steel Valley also beat Stowe Rocks earlier this year. So, um, you know, has arguably the best win out of anyone in this group. Uh, speaking of the Ironmen, they won the 2016 and 2018 Whippeal titles uh, made the 2017 championship game in there too. They were the top seed in the playoffs last year before their running back got hurt and had to miss the semifinal game uh, where they lost to Beaver Falls, um, who is the number two seed this year. Uh, but if you remember back to that 2016 Steel Valley team, they were the Mercy boys that Mercy ruled everyone they played, including Southern Columbia in the wow, state championship. Wow, that's right. Game. So, um, you know, Steel Valley strong, Strong history of success and arguably was the most successful 2A team for the first couple of years of the sixth classification era. Beaver Falls also has had success. They moved down from 3A to 2A in 2020 and won the Whippeal title that year. They reached the Whippeal title game last year and lost to Sarah Catholic. So in their two years in 2A, <laughs> they've made the championship game both times. Oh, and they won the 2016 Whippeal and state championship. So wow. Beaver Falls, strong history of success. Um, and they've got a really good team this year with Jaron Brickner, quarterback, and um, the Trey Singleton and Bricks Rawls and a lot of other really good players on that team. So Beaver Falls, absolutely a threat to make a deep run into the 2A playoffs. So those are the two teams with the buys. Um, so the winner of the 8-9 game between McGuffey and Mohawk will take on Steel Valley in the quarterfinals. Uh, McGuffey had a, a very strong season, played uh, Stowe Rocks to a tight 6 nothing loss, um, you know, played Keystone Oaks tight as well. Um, so this is a good McGuffey team that they run a triple option attack. Um, their quarterback, Philip McEwen, their running back, Kyle Brookman, um, you know, all good with the ball in their hands, whether they're running it or throwing it. Um, and, and McGuffey is a, a strong team. And McGuffey is a team that's had a lot of regular season success that hasn't really translated into postseason success over the last couple of years. Um, so it'd be kind of cool to see them, um, you know, move things forward. Their 2019 yeah. victory was their first playoff win since 1994. Um, they'll take on a Mohawk team, which you may remember had to miss the first few weeks of the season because of a, uh, a hazing investigation yeah. that took place at their program, but they rebounded to make the playoffs. So, um, you know, a, a good, good rebound for story for Mohawk uh, getting into the postseason. Nishanik, um, their uh, quarterback that we talked about early in the show, Johnny Huff, um, very nearly reached the 1,000-1,000 club, didn't quite get there, um, but just a, a dynamic offensive attack for Nishanik um, with Johnny Huff at the helm, um, getting the number four seed. Their only loss in conference play was against Beaver Falls, so a, a good, strong Nishanik team um, that's made the playoffs in nine out of the last 11 years, sure. only reached the Whitfield Championship once in their history, though, um, but potentially poised to, to make a run if they can get past Sarah Catholic uh, in the second round who they played in the first round last year and lost. So a little bit of history between those two programs. Nishanik is the four seed. will take on Burl as the 13 seed um, who snapped a nine year playoff drought last year when they made the playoffs for the first time since 2012. Uh, Burl has had some historic success, um, but haven't won a playoff game since 2004 and now take on a really good Nishanik team. Burl is a team that likes to run the ball a lot, and that's pretty much all they will do is run the ball. Yeah. Sarah Catholic is the number five seed, is the defending Whippeal 2A two champions, a. reached the state title game last well, year. Well, they were 2A runner-up, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah, 2A runner-up in the state, but they were the Whippeal champions. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, Sarah Catholic um, – had some historic things happen this year. Their wide receiver, Amir Spencer, uh, led the Whippeal in receiving, and they had two quarterbacks throw for over 1,000 yards in the regular season, wow. which by what I was able to find has only happened three other times in Whippeal history. And I think two of those times were because of injuries to the starter like halfway through the season, um, and somebody else came in. Um, actually, those were both happened at Pine Richland. One of them was Phil Dracovic, who's now at uh, you know Boston College, um, and you'll probably remember him from lighting it up in a state championship game. Uh, Phil got hurt halfway through his junior year, had already thrown for a thousand yards, and uh, the 
replacement came in and played five games and Max Davini was his name through for over a thousand as well. But Sarah's quarterbacks, Elijah Ward and uh, Quadir Stribling have both thrown for over a thousand yards this year. So really cool story. Um, kind of a historic success for Sarah Catholic there on the stat sheet. And Sarah, the defending champions was their third championship in school history. And we'll see what happens in the playoffs this year. Mm -hmm. You know, they're if their defense is able to come together the way they did last year, it was really their defense that led them to the title last year. Um, you know, watch out because they, if they can play defense like they did last year with forcing all those turnovers, then they're a very dangerous team. They'll take on Washington as the number 12 seed. This is a bit of a disappointing season for Washington. They were a team that, you know, I thought was going to challenge Stowe Rocks for the conference title in the Century Conference. And, um, you know, really got throttled by Stowe Rocks. They got mercy rolled and then, um, you know, lost to Keystone Oaks, lost to McGuffey, who was their rival. Um, you know, Washington's a team that they can, they put a lot of points on the board against bad teams. And they can still score against good teams, but they just can't stop anyone who has a good offense this year. Um, you know, Washington's a program that had some historic success, but got bounced out of the playoffs um, in the first round last year by New Brighton. They were the number four seed and got upset um, in the, the opening round. And now is the number 12 seed uh, takes on a, a good Sarah Catholic team that they actually played earlier this year. Um, I think it was like 36, 35 or wow. 35, 34. So it was a close game earlier this year. We'll see if, uh, you know, that, result repeats uh, in, in the first round here. So this is a game to keep an eye on because Washington's probably a little bit better than their seeding says, but just haven't always put it together against top quality opponents this year. Yeah. Still it's rocks been tough. Is, yeah. Still rocks is the number three seed. They're a team that took a little while to kind of find their offensive groove, but they really found it. Um, Josh Jenkins, their quarterback threw for six touchdowns this past week. Um, I actually forgot to include him on my players of the week slide because he played a game on Thursday, not on Friday, uh. um, but yeah, that was my fault. But Josh is a fantastic quarterback. Um, and, you know, they've got a slew of talented offensive playmakers. Anyone on that team is capable of scoring anytime they touch the ball. Um, Stowe Rocks is very, very dangerous, um, you know, perfectly capable of running the table and winning this thing and, and getting their first Whippeal championship, um, you know, since 1987. Um, they've reached the championship game a bunch of times since then, but just haven't been able to, to pull off a title since then. Um, but they're, they're clicking on all cylinders now. Where Stowe Rocks has kind of always struggled is up front that they don't have the biggest guys in the trenches. And when they run into a team like a Steel Valley, who they played mm -hmm. earlier this year, that likes to run the ball and can control the clock in the trenches, they've, they've struggled. But Stowe Rocks, I mean, with their passing game, they can score with anyone and they can score quickly. They take on Riverside, um, who's back in the playoffs uh, for the first time since 2019. So a nice little bounce back story for Riverside. They actually made the semifinals uh, three times in a, a four year span there at the start of the sixth classification era. One of those was actually a run from the number 14 seed to the semifinals. So they're a, a program that's known some playoff success in the past, um, but kind of did what they needed to do to get in this year. Um, you know, beat the teams handily that were below them, uh, but lost to the teams that were above them. All right. The number six seed is Keystone <laughs> Oaks. Sorry, I'm talking a lot. I get thirsty, you know. That's all right. Six seed is Keystone Oaks. Moved down from 3A to 2A this year. Their quarterback, Nick Buckley, uh, has, a, has a great arm, um, and they found some success with Sean Reek running the ball and Clinton Robinson getting the ball in his hands any way they could. Um, and so they've been uh, surprisingly strong. I'll say, you know, I did not really – expect them to go out and beat Washington and beat McGuffey. Um, you know, I thought they'd be close against McGuffey, but I did not expect them to go out and beat Washington, but you know, KO has proven that they are a, a definite threat, um, you know, to potentially make some noise in the playoffs. They, uh, you know, they got hammered by Stowe rocks in conference play earlier this year. So the potential uh, quarterfinal rematch with Stowe rocks, you know, we'll see. They got hammered earlier this year, but um, you know, good for, good for KO, you know, third consecutive playoff appearance, reached the semifinals a few times. Um, but, you know, haven't, haven't been to a Whitfield championship game um, since Dormont High School won those Whitfield titles back in the wow. 1940s when they were a powerhouse program. Apollo Ridge also getting back into the playoffs this year for the third time in four years. Uh, congratulations to the Vikings. They reached the uh, semifinals in uh, 2020, I believe it was. Yeah, it was the semifinals. Um, they won their first round game that year. Um, so Apollo Ridge, um, 
hasn't had a ton of playoff success, just uh, four playoff wins in school history, but um, they got back in thanks to winning a week nine game against local rival Burl. Um, mm-hmm. So they got in. So congrats to the Vikings. They get Keystone Oaks in the first round and Apollo Ridge, their uh, running back, Nick Kersey was our player of the week uh, a couple weeks ago when he had a six touchdown performance. Um, so amazing they... six touchdowns was the barometer to make that this year. Most <laughs> of the time, wasn't it, it? it pretty much was. And um yeah, and that six touchdown performance came against Sarah Catholic because uh, AR upset Sarah. So that was, you know, they've they've got a big win under their belts this season with that win over Sarah. So you never yeah. know. You never know. Yep. Ligonier Valley is the number seven seed. Um, second playoff appearance after moving into the Whippeal from uh, District 6, where they won titles in 16 and 17 and had a strong run of reaching consecutive district finals. Um, so back in the playoffs again, uh, searching for their first uh, Whippeal playoff victory. Um, but they've obviously been a program with a lot of success Mm -hmm. as well. Uh, They will take on the Western Beaver Golden Beavers um, and Western Beaver, uh, third consecutive playoff appearance, fifth time in the last nine years, haven't won a playoff game since 2008. So somebody's going to win a playoff game here between Ligonier Valley and Western Beaver and is going to get the reward of playing Beaver Falls in the second round. Yeah, well, hey, look, you know, anything can happen. You're right. You're right. And Western Beaver's got some talented players with Xander LaFerve and some other good players. And, um, you know, uh, Leonard Valley's got some talent on that. There's some well. talent. It, it's, oh, yeah. I'll be honest with you. I, it, it, that was the one team that I gl- was glad made, made it because, you know, their whole reason why they moved to the WPI is to try and elevate, you know, their program by playing tougher competition now I think they're accustomed to it. I was very happy to see them make the postseason here in the whip. Yep. Yep. And they've been strong. I mean, they played they a tight game against Sarah Catholic. Um, you know, Hayden Siraki is led the team in rushing with over a thousand yards and led the team in receiving. So um, yeah, Ligonier Valley is strong and a good team. Um, yeah. So this should be, this should be a good game in the first round. All right. Moving on to one, a where 16 teams made the playoffs. Um, the one thing you'll note from looking at the bracket is that Clareton got the number nine seed. And you may recall, we talked about this a few weeks ago with, you know, how would the Whippeal seed the 1A playoffs because of those non-conference games that Clareton had lost, including a game to Olsh, who they play in the first round as a, a rematch of not only that game, but last year's quarterfinal game. Well, obviously they didn't do too much, didn't respect them that much. No, and, and I think, honestly, I think that, I think this bracket is seeded correctly. I think, you know, Bishop Canavan, clearly the number one team, Laurel, number two, Greensburg, Central Catholic, number three, Mapletown with that undefeated season at number four. Um, and then, you know, there were three teams in, in Southside Beaver with only one loss to Laurel at number five, which was fair. And then there were three teams in the Black Hills Conference that finished in a three-way tie between Fort Cherry, Burgettstown, and Olsh. And Olsh beat Clareton handily head-to-head. And I think it's fair that they seeded them Fort Cherry six, Burgettstown seven, and Olsh eight. It's, mm. it, you know, I, I, based on results on the field, I think this bracket was seeded fairly. The one team that may have kind of gotten a raw deal was Rochester dropping all the way down to the 14th seed. Uh, but I think that was partially because of um, just how the matchups played out with not wanting to match them up against uh, a team from their class or their conference. In conference the first round. Sure. Yep. All right. So Bishop Canavan as the number one overall seed defending Whippeal 1A champions lost to Red Bank Valley in the state semifinals last year, basically as their entire team back from last year. I think just like four or five kids graduated. Um, so Canavan is absolutely primed for another run at the Whippeal title. Their only loss this season came against Steelton High Spire in week zero. And, you know, Canavan is, is as good as advertised. Mm-hmm. I'll put they it sure that are. way. They sure are. So they take on Jeanette in the first round of the playoffs, which Jeanette, nice bounce back story, you know, a program that had a lot of historic success, but last season um, was kind of down in the dumps after they won the Whippeal title in 2020, reached the state championship game, and then had a mass exodus from the program with some players leaving, some players moving out of state, some players transferring to other schools, uh, Brad Birch being one of them. Um, so, you know, they, they went through one down year and bounced back and are in the playoffs again this year. Um, you know, they're, it's it's a rebuilding process to rebuild a program, but it's good to see Jeanette back in the playoffs this season. It it really is. Yeah. Olsh is the defending Whippeal runner-up. Uh 
is the number eight seed um, just because of kind of how things played out with that three-way tie. Uh, Osh quarterback Nehemiah Azim missed the game against Bishop Canavan a few weeks ago, um, but he was able to return to play last week um, in that win over Cornell. So Osh should be at full strength heading into the playoffs. And Azim was the Whippeal leader in passing before he had to miss that game. Caden Olson from Armstrong wound up winning the Whippeal passing title, but Nehemiah Azim, very talented quarterback, um, capable of doing big things uh, with Osh. And then they take on Clareton in the first round of the playoffs. Um, a Clareton team that's very young this season, um, had a really tough non-conference schedule, took care of business in conference play, but, um, you know, tough, tough non-conference schedule uh, that they had to go through, uh, playing a lot of really, really tough opponents. Um, but I think this is a fair seating for Clareton, um, you know, and, and we'll see what happens against Olsh in the first round. But Clareton's mm-hmm. a team that's not accustomed to uh, – early playoff exits, I'll say, you know, success for them is winning a Whippeal title, 14 sure. time champions, uh, won 10 of the last 16 titles. So they expect to make deep runs and I fully expect them to be back next year after these players get some more experience. They had a lot of freshmen and sophomores playing on the team this year. Mm-hmm. The Maple Town Maples, one of the best stories of the season, won the first conference title since 2005, Landon Stevenson, their running back, um, won the Whippeal rushing title. So all around great story for the Maples uh, getting into the playoffs, winning the conference title. They've never won a playoff game. So it'd be really cool to see them be able to pull it off in the first round against Leechburg, who's running back Braylon Lovelace had to miss last week's game, but Lovelace is a pit commit. Um, and um, actually the first D one commit from Leechburg since his father, David Lovelace. That's kind of a cool story. Uh, but this is also uh, two of the top running backs in the WPIL, assuming Lovelace plays. Uh, that Stevenson was first in the Whippeal in rushing, um, and Lovelace was also in the top 10 with over 1,300 yards. So it should be a good matchup between these two. Leechburg uh, can also throw the ball pretty well. Uh, yeah. So it, this, this should be a really good first round game between two fairly high scoring teams. Uh, Leechburg has some good receivers with Tyler Foley and Logan Klein, a good quarterback in Jaden Floyd. Um, so they, they have offense, even if Lovelace can't play. Southside Beaver moved down from 2A to 1A this year, uh, put together a strong regular season as the number five seed. Their only loss came to Laurel, who was the conference champions, who also moved down from 2A to 1A. Um, and Southside is definitely a threat to make a run in the playoffs this year as well. Um, you know, if I, if I had to pick a semifinal team to come out of here, I would like Southside's chances. Um, they're dual threat quarterback Brody Omashi's uh, been really good this season. They've got a good, strong running game, four players with over uh, 300 yards rushing this season. So Southside, definitely a threat to make a run in the playoffs. They'll take on California out of the Tri-County South. Um, California, a little bit, uh, I don't want to say disappointing this year that they, they lost, uh, you know, a game to Manesson, a team I thought they were better than, uh, but they wound up in a three-way tie with Manesson and Carmichael's um, for basically second, third, and fourth in the Tri-County South Conference. Um, California has been pretty consistently in the playoffs, but hasn't had a lot of success once they got there. Big offensive line, strong running game, uh, but they'll have their work cut out for them against a really good Southside Beaver team. Yeah, they will. Yep. Laurel um, as the number two seed. Uh, last year was also the conference champion uh, in 2A, moved down to 1A this year. Uh, you may recall Laurel lost a six to nothing quarterfinal against Sarah Catholic last year. So, I mean, think about that, right? Sarah That's Catholic crazy. went on to win the Whitfield title, and Laurel, like, if they scored a touchdown, could have beat them, you know? Um, so, Laurel's been a good team, a good program, um, good, strong rushing attack for Laurel as well. I know we've seen. Um, you know, their star running back, Landon Smith, who ran for over 1,200 yards and 23 touchdowns this year. We've seen his name uh, a few times in our players of the week. Um, so watch out for Laurel coming through this bracket as well. They'll take on the Carmichael's Mighty Mikes, the fourth team out of the Tri-County South Conference. Um, Carmichael's getting back into the playoffs this year. Um, their uh, quarterback, Alec Anderson, um, was our player of the week one, one week this year when he uh, through for six touchdowns um and I, I believe he broke the school passing record this past week as well so pretty cool story for Carmichael wow. this year getting back into the playoffs as well another team that usually gets there but hasn't had a lot of success once they've gotten there um but good for Carmichael's being in the playoffs again um Burgettstown gets into the playoffs as well um as the number seven seed they 
uh, put together a strong campaign, including a win over Olsh in the middle of the season, um, which was just an all around fantastic effort from the Blue Devils, but then went out and lost to their rivals, Fort Cherry, the final week of the season. Seventh playoff appearance in the last eight years after they didn't make the playoffs for like 20 years in a row. So really cool for, for Burgesstown, this little run of success that they've had. They will take on the Union Scotties, who are making their first playoff appearance since 2017 um, under new head coach Kim Niebla. Um, pretty cool that union was able to get in with a first year head coach, their 10th playoff appearance all time. Um, and yeah, you know, union's a team that seems like when they've gotten in the playoffs, they'll usually win a game. Um, but they, uh, haven't made it very often. So cool for union to be able to get in this year, um, under a first year head coach Greensburg central Catholic is the number three seed, the Eastern Conference champions. Um, they are absolutely loaded with playmakers all over the field. Um, Tyree Turner at quarterback, along with a slew of talented offensive playmakers with Deshaun Craggett at running back, Samir Crosby, Jaden Kennedy, Amari Mack, a lot of really, really good players for Greensburg Central Catholic. I would not at all be surprised if uh, GCC put it on a run and made it really? to the Whitfield Championship game. Wow. No, they're, they're good. They're, they're really good. They'll take on Rochester in the first round. Rochester, probably the only team that got underseeded a little bit um, in this bracket because they did beat Clareton in a non-conference game. Rochester has a really strong rushing attack, as they always do, um, led by Antonio Laurie, Jerome Mullins, and Amari Curry, and Parker Lyons, their quarterback as well. So um, Rochester is going to run the ball, but um, they got a tough draw against the good Greensburg Central Catholic team that can throw the ball all over the yard. Fort Cherry, finally, the Rangers coming at the number six seed, their first playoff appearance since 2017. I remember we interviewed their head coach, Tanner Gary, uh, a few years ago. The stadium yeah. is named after his grandfather, uh, which is such just a cool thing. And their freshman quarterback, Matt Sieg, uh, became the first freshman to ever join the 1000-1000 club. So Arrow definitely pointing up for Fort Cherry. We'll see where they can go this year and on into the future as well. Yeah. They will take on the Manesson Greyhounds in the first round of the playoffs. Manesson, another run heavy team um you know they they took on uh maple town a few weeks ago in a game that i went to see manessen uh has some really good running backs you know or running back and quarterback that can both run the ball and davon burke and uh Ty davon burke and tyvon kershaw uh both really good uh with the ball in their hands uh, running the ball, but uh, Manesson was a team in that Maple Town game. They committed so many penalties; they just kept shooting themselves in the foot. Um, you know, they had like a first and goal inside the ten, and wound up with fourth and goal from like the thirty-five yard line. Oh and my gosh! Yeah, it was just like it was it was rough. Just the the penalties that that they kept uh, incurring on themselves. So that is a rundown of the entire Whitfield playoff field. Um, you know, thanks everyone for sticking with us we hope you enjoyed it so one well, they're gonna they're gonna fast forward to whatever teams they want to take a look at it's yep. nice that we talk about them all yep and one last thing before we go because we always talk about it is who are our top five overall teams in the wpial bruce finally came around to agreeing with me that aliquippa is the number one team um, well they beat my number one team i mean what am i supposed <laughs> to do i mean <laughs> You could have listened to me from the beginning, you know? Wow. <laughs> but where's the fun in that? I know. Exactly I know. right. Yep. So, yeah, um, I, I think we're mostly in agreement here. I slotted Pine Richland up into my top five just uh -huh. because I think they're playing better than anyone in 5A right now, and they beat North Allegheny head-to-head. -head, so I had a really hard time, you know, moving North Allegheny up in my rankings when they had lost a head-to-head -head game. But how many Richland. losses did Pine Richland have? Two? uh three two or three let me look okay. up all right all right yeah. i just thought i'd ask the question yeah it was it was two or three but but here's the other thing right they made a change at quarterback halfway mm -hmm. through the year and the games no. they lost were previous to that i get it i yeah. i i think that i mean at least on my side it's like aliquippa who's undefeated and then four one loss teams right mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay. you're, you're right. correct there yep um and that's very interesting because you didn't have Central. Did you? You didn't have Central Valley number two. Uh, no, and, I, I uh, until them, they lost. <laughs> right? I, I had them. Yeah, I had them behind McKeesport. <laughs> okay, I had McKeesport number two. Um, but McKeesport losing to TJ. Uh -huh. Um, 
I actually, if I had done a number six, McKeesport would have been my number six. Um, so, you know, that's I, uh, that to me, that's strange that, you know, when is you move them up when they mm-hmm. lost, they so. played a really good game against a really know, good. Uh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just making observations. This right. Is, this is the first time that, well, you saw mine, but I didn't see yours until yes. just now. So that that's why I'm just kind of like asking the questions of, yeah, you got a, a three loss team in there. You have a team moving up in the rankings after they lost. Um, okay. No, I mean, but in the grand scheme of things, the only difference between our top fives is you have Pine Richland and I have Armstrong. Yes, that's correct. And I'll say that's based on what Pine Richland did in the latter half of the season. Mm -hmm. So Pine Richland does have three losses. They lost a week zero game to Pickerington North Ohio, who's one of the top ranked Mm -hmm. teams in Ohio. So whatever, throw that one out. Um, And then lost to Penn Hills in a close game and Seneca Valley by 10. And then they switched quarterbacks and just, you know, they they rattled Mm -hmm. off six straight wins. So there's they're six and oh since they made the quarterback change. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no. So I, you know, thinking about, like I said, I've always said these rankings are, if you put teams head to head on the field together, who would I pick? And I would, uh, Pine Richland beat North Allegheny head to head. So I, you know, I would pick them. Because mm-hmm. I saw them I, do it with uh, their new alignment. North Allegheny yeah. and Bethel Park. I mean, those are the yeah. It's top, hard to argue. The, 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 right. The top team in 6A, top team in 5A. Yep. And then and we'll uh, see how it goes as the playoffs progress. That is absolutely right. I mean, uh, you know, we're going to going to keep keep these rankings going until uh obviously till the uh the uh week before the uh Whitfield Championships because the Whitfield Championships will decide, you know, yep. like uh who <laughs> who are the top 5, actually the top 6, but you know, we only have room for five. So yeah, there's, so uh, somebody's not going to have a seat, but you know, that it is what it is. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, very interesting. Um, and yeah. thanks everyone for joining us. We really appreciate it. Um, you know, check out steelcityblitz.com. I have a lot of content planned for this week to preview the playoffs. So, um, you know, thanks everyone that stuck with our hour and a half show here where we ran through all of the playoff teams, but you know, there's a lot of teams out there that there's, there's great stories to tell, right? Like your South Moreland's that didn't make it for 40 years, uh, Deer Lake's making it for the third time in school history. So, you know, we want to make sure we try and tell not well, just the success stories of the, the great teams at the top, but you know, these teams that are having historically good seasons or runs as well. This is the platform to uh, recognize them. Now, it's a diff- completely different season, and we're going to recognize the teams that benefit from making the postseason, and that's yep. where we go from here, right? Absolutely, and this is the exciting time because now it's, you know, win or play basketball, if you want to say that, that, um, yeah. you know, you can or wrestle win, or whatever you do. Yeah, or yeah. swim or, yeah. you know, whatever you're. Uh, I, would, I would actually argue the teams that go out and get wrestlers to come play on their football teams usually have a lot of success. I know Derry turned their program around in the you know mid-2010s by going out and getting a bunch of wrestlers to come play for them. So, yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. Uh, wow. Here we go. Um, I've gone through just about the entire state of Pennsylvania and previews of districts. And uh, so now I can tell you what, I'm, I'm ready for the game to start. <laughs> and they're coming Friday That's night. Right. will be here before we know it. And uh, I'll start even, I think Thursday, I'll probably be doing like, they have this Eastern conference thing out here, which is like the equivalent of like what the NIT is to like, okay. you know, the NCAA tournament. There's like this, group of teams that are part of this eastern conference so some of the teams that didn't make it in the district playoffs are playing for an eastern conference championship quite honestly it's a great thing because a lot of teams use it as like a jumping off point or 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 a catapult into the next year and you can point to the fact that teams that have played eastern conference games you know uh benefited that uh, benefited from that Mm-hmm. uh the following season so yeah should be a lot of fun i'll be over at burke's catholic and uh that'll be a lot of fun on a thursday night so yeah 
Yeah. All right. Well, all right. And we'll be back next week with more playoff action as we get things rolling towards Whitfield Championships. The 5A and 6A championship games will be at Norwin High School and 1A, 2A, 3A, and 4A will be at Heinz Field this year or uh, Akershire Stadium, whatever it is. It's Heinz Field still. Wow. Um, yeah, so. right. Ak- what is it again? Akershire Stadium. Akershire. It's, okay. it's Heinz Field. Yeah. All right. What is that? What are they like a software company or uh, insurance? Insurance. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, hey, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Appreciate all the comments. Hey, next week we got to take questions. We will. We'll, we'll take some questions next week. We had a, we had a lot to get oh, through this week trying to, to highlight out. all the, all the playoff games and matchups. So, um, you know, uh, we'll, uh, we'll delve more into some questions and some other things next week as we, uh, you know, get deeper into the playoffs and progress towards our eventual Whitfield champions. All right, gang. Hey, listen, we'll see you next week. Thanks for stopping by the WPIAL Blitz show. See you later.